Welcome to E3. Maximizing your potential. Yeah, because for you to maximize your potential, you need to exhibit some form of personal leadership. True or false? Praise Jesus. And then we're going to look at how can I maximize our potential. You know, um, something that is very, very important or key in, how, in the house here is the fact that we see that every time when pastor ministers to us or teaches us, he teaches us literally from his life testimonies, from, you know, what happens in his life. Praise Jesus. And we hear stories upon stories and examples and scenarios, you know, and all of that. And everything I'm going to be sharing this evening is basically or practically what I have learned from pastor, what I have put to practice, and what I've seen work for me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I'm just coming to repeat to us what pastor has taught us, I've put to practice, and has worked for me. Praise Jesus. So looking at maximizing your potential, we'll be looking at some principles, looking at two case study. Number one is Joseph. Praise Jesus. Look at the life of Joseph and see how was Joseph able to maximize his potential. Because when you talk about um, national transformation, national, for you to be a national transformation agent, praise the Lord, because for every society to be transformed, um, it needs individuals, people, and the people that will transform their society, it's you and me, people that are seated here. Everyone, if you look at it, everyone that is in the place of authority today, they are not better than you as it were. Praise Jesus. It's just a function of what they know and what they've been able to put to practice. Praise God. And we're going to be able to see this evening how me, Damola Suarez can put things to work for my life and I can see things work as basic as they are. What little, what steps, what principles can I put to practice? Can I put to place in my life and I see things work? Praise God. National transformation doesn't need to happen big. You see that for everyone who has made any significant transformation in their life, in their society, in their environment, it necessarily didn't, didn't need to start big. Praise God. In fact, I've come to discover that anything that looks like it starts big, watch out. It's a, you know, there is a lot of, it's something you should be careful about. Praise the Lord. And you don't also even need to be in necessary political power for you to have, you know, necessarily create a um, national transformation. For example, what political power does um, Mark Zuckerberg hold? What political power does the likes of Bill Gates hold? What political, you know, but they are not just creating national transformation, they are creating global transformations by the power of the, the value they are able to add to their society. Praise Jesus. So national, you see that national transformation doesn't necessarily even need to start from political. Praise God. Praise the Lord. From your field, from the position where you are now, if you can begin to take the right steps, if you can begin to look at thinking in the light of, I'm not just here to feed my stomach. My life is not just about, you know, feeling good. But my life is bigger than myself. I have a cause bigger than me. And you can pursue that cause. Changing one life at a time, taking one step at a time, you will see that you can create true national transformation. Because everything that grows big starts small. Praise the Lord. So we're going to be looking at some principles for maximizing your potential. How can you maximize your potential? How can you maximize your potential to the point whereby you become a national phenomenon? You become a force to reckon with. And not just a national phenomenon, but it can even become a global phenomenon. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so we'll look at five things quickly. The first is your gift and your passion. When we talk about your gift and your passion, what's the seed? Galatians 6, 7 to 8 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Genesis eight twenty two. 22. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. 2 Corinthians 9.10 Now he that supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply increase to your store of seed 
and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Praise the Lord. God is always about looking to put seed in the hands of men who are ready. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There is something in your hands now. There is a cause. There is a vision. There is something that God has placed in your hands that if you put this, no, as little as it is, if you put it to work and put the necessary steps in it, you will see it get global. Praise Jesus. No matter how small that is, no matter how small, you know, that is that God has given to you, if you put it, and what do we do with seeds? Praise the Lord. What do we do with seeds? You put them to work. You plant it. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. And so, sometimes it may look very small. It may look very insignificant. But the first work is this. You put it to work. You plant it. Praise Jesus. There is a time and a season. First is that you put your seeds to work. You don't eat your seeds. You don't take, you know, you don't, for, you don't forsake your seed. You don't look at it as little as it is. For instance, look at the life of Joseph. Joseph had a dream. Joseph had a dream, you know, something that excites him. He saw a dream that, though, someday I am born for whatever, bigger than what I am. Even though he was the least, one of the least in the house. He was probably the second, you know, one, the second to the last child. Even amongst all the colleagues, when they were looking, you know, amongst his, his siblings, he wasn't even qualified to mend the father's business. There were 12 children. The 10 of them were busy taking care of the father's estate, running the father's conglomerate. He wasn't even qualified to run the father's conglomerate. Meanwhile, he had a heart, a burning in his heart, that someday he was not just going to run the father's conglomerate, but he was going to lead nations. Praise the Lord. Even when it seemed like he was not qualified to. Mind you, the father sent, you know, he sent the other siblings out to go and run things, run business. Probably one was the accountant, one was the GM, one, you know, one was in charge of HR, one was in charge of logistics and managing things. And, you know, they were all mending the father's business. And they were running things. They were the big boys in the family. But he, what could he do? He was the baby of the house. Even when he shared his dream with his brother, when he shared, you know, see the seed I have, see this dream that I've caught, they mocked him. It looked impossible. Praise the Lord. His siblings, he was excited about it. He thought maybe they were going to encourage him. Even when he shared it with his father, who he felt like was a mentor to him, you know, there wasn't any sign of believing in it. How will this thing be? Oh, you mean that me, your father, your mother and your siblings who all bow before you, it didn't seem imaginable. It didn't seem possible. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Though it tarries, wait. No matter what it is, the vision that God has put in your heart now, the, your work is to put it to work. Your job currently is to, even no matter how it looks, even if it doesn't seem possible right now, your duty is to put it to work. Praise the Lord. And just as the Bible says, line upon line, precept upon precept, the past of the just shines brighter and brighter, brighter and brighter. As you step forward day by day, you see it, it keeps expanding. It keeps expanding. You know, every great dream, every great business, every global business started as little as it is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can look at the life and history of different great people that you admire today. Just one step of faith. Even they themselves, do you know that many times people who have great dreams or who are established, they didn't even believe sometimes that their dreams would be as big as it is today. But by being consistent, by believing in himself, mind you, sometimes even they doubted in the process. But guess what? When their faith was failing them the most, they took courage and still stepped further. Praise God. And that's why I believe that, you know, the darker it looks like you are in the night, the closer you are to your morning. So even in that your business, in that your endeavor, in whatever it is your hand finds doing now, it may look like things you're struggling through things. Just take the next step. Guess what? When it looks like you're going through the toughest of time, is the time for you to begin to think strategic. What is the next step? Praise Jesus. When it looks like the business is failing, dream bigger. Praise God. Hear me, when it looks like your business, in your job, in your career, you are experiencing a downward climate, do you know how to get courage again? What you should do is that begin to think of the next level. You know, operations, operations is day-to-day -day activity. Operations have a way of choking out faith in you. 
it, it strangles, it strangles you, you know, because you're running about, oh, you are owing this debtor, you are owing this person, things are not working well, there's one issue or the other, you know, salary is month is ending, you need to pay staff, you know, one problem or the other. When you face those difficult times in launching your, um, your album, in running your productions, in running, you know, your movies and whatever it is that God has placed in your heart and it looks like you're experiencing the toughest time, that is when you need to begin to dream of the next level. Praise the Lord. Because what happens is that when you begin to see the next level, suddenly the challenges of the now, the next level overshadows it because there's an excitement to move up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The seed that God has put in your hands, you put them to work. God has given every one of us, irrespective of the status, the position, the place where you think you are standing now, there is something you need to be busy doing. There is a vision, there is a seed, there is an inspiration God has put in your heart that is staring up in you that you need to put to work. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. And you know, we like to say this, what you don't put to use becomes useless. True or false? So when you hold on to it too much, you analyze, you are strategizing, you get into that position of analysis of paralysis. Put it to work. Put your seeds to work. Begin to dig the ground. Sow the seed and get it to work. Praise the Lord. God needs us to get out of our seat, to get out of our seat and begin to put ourselves to work. And begin to get busy doing what he has placed in our hearts to do. That's where national transformation starts from. National transformation starts from you. Praise the Lord. How do you lead yourself? How do you push yourself beyond boundaries? How do you push yourself beyond limitations? There will always be circumstances at every point and different phases in life. There will always be a time when it looks like you have gotten to your lead. You know what a lead is? A lead is like where you've gotten to where you can't, you know, where you can't, um, you can't move beyond. You would always experience those phases. But guess what I've discovered? Life is always in circles. Praise the Lord. Always in circles. Have you noticed that no matter the challenge you are going through now, the, only, the difference is that you're probably going through it at a bigger scale. But you've gone through it before. And that's why one thing is important, ensure not to jump process. Because if you jump process and you experience it again, you would go back to repeating that phase in life. Praise the Lord. But if you're able to go through it successfully, you would always know how to draw strength from your past success. And that's why David said that uh, if, if I could slay, you know, the lion and the bear experience, if with my bare hands I could slay the lions and the bear, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He was able to draw testimonies, draw courage, draw strength. If God could save me when I didn't have faith in him, when I didn't know what to do, how much more now that I know the God that I serve? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How much more now that I know the God that I serve? With the baptism of the Holy Ghost in me, with speaking in tongues... Praise Jesus with insight on wisdom and revelation, with all of God's word, indwelling in me, the fullness of the Godhead, indwelling in me. What's that mountain that I can't sub overcome? That that God has put in your hand, it's time for you to put it to work. Praise the Lord. Can you but say, put the seeds to work. Get the vision out there. That inspiration, those nudges that God is putting in your heart, it's time for us to get out and begin to put ourselves to work. It's, you know, you know, the time for you to begin to sit down and begin to think. And, and, it's, it's, that time is over. Get out there and begin to put yourself to work. Praise the Lord. Those seeds are supposed to be planted, not admired. You know, I mean, sometimes you say that, oh, you know, and this, I have fantastic idea. This thing is so interesting. So, and guess what? We are waiting for and you're just sitting down there and you're waiting for when you will just hit it big for you to go. No, 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 no. Go out there. It is in putting it to work that you hit it big. Praise the Lord. It is when you step out, you would find provision and resources. Not when you sit down on the line. In fact, when you sit down, 
At the initial phase, it looks beautiful. But when you sit down so long and keep looking at it, you now begin to realize the circumstance and the difficulty you face to achieve it. Praise the Lord. And suddenly you begin to doubt yourself and giving up. Church, for that which God has committed to your hand, it's time for you to put yourself to work. It's time for you to go out there to sow those seeds. Praise Jesus. National transformation. Maximizing your potential. Maximizing your potential. You know, when we talk about potential, what does, what does it mean really? It's capacity to do more. Praise the Lord. Potential is basically capacity to do more. True or false? Capacity for you to do more. And the challenge is that some of us, we don't even know how much we are able to do until we are faced with circumstances that are bigger than us. And that's why my, one of my prayers is that I don't pray that God should give me opportunity equal my, capa my capacity, but he should give me capacity equal my opportunities. Praise the Lord. Let the opportunity come, the capacity will come. <laughs> Praise God. And that's why we say that if it cannot kill you, it can only stretch you. Praise the Lord. If it cannot kill you, it can only stretch you. So don't be scared of it. Don't be scared of taking up on that. Don't be scared of going out and putting yourself to work. Praise God. Because the provision and the resources needed to succeed is out there. It's just waiting for you to step into it. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Praise the Lord. The next step is being diligent and committed. Diligence. In growing that seed, you need to be committed to it. You need to be committed and you, know, you need to be diligent, honing your skills, building your... The fact that God has given you skills, you know, all of those things may look come in the face of talent, in the face of raw ideas and all of that. But it's, it's your responsibility to refine them, to put them to work, to be diligent about it, to study about it, to learn about it, to grow. You know, pastor always tells us that our life must be project-driven. Project brings progress. Project brings progress. What is that project that you're working on? Every time if you see that in your life currently, there is no project you're working on. Just know you've, you're on a standstill. When we mean project, it doesn't mean that you need to be doing one big building. A project can be as simple as I'm doing a course. I'm learning something new. When we say project, one new thing are you trying to achieve? One new vision are you pursuing? One new initiative are you driving? What's that new thing that you are doing currently? Every time you see that there is nothing new, there is nothing fresh about your life. There is nothing, you know, there is nothing excitingly new that you are doing. Know that there is a lead. There is something, you know, praise the Lord. Project brings progress. What new projects are you pursuing? You need to be committed to those visions. You need to be committed to those dreams. You need to be diligent, submissive enough to learn the trade, to learn the act, to go out of your way, all out to learn about it. You see in the life of Joseph, he was always committed. Everywhere he found himself, even in the midst, mind you that even he knew that at different point, he has experienced different form of hatred and all of that. But he knew that there were some skills that the brother had. That he was always interested in going out with them or going to be amongst them, I'm sure that it's because he wanted to learn something. Praise the Lord. You see the joy and the excitement that, you know, was in his heart when his father sent him out. When his father told him, oh, come and take food. Mind you, father, come and take food to your brother. You know, he was excited that, oh, he was going to meet with them. At least he would spend some time that day with them to see how the, how the family business is being run. And meanwhile, the people he was going to meet and was excited about, they had hatred in it for him in their heart. They were even plotting to kill him. Praise the Lord. Yeah, sometimes where you need to even learn may be in some difficult scenario. We have seen believers, even the, like, a, like Daniel. Daniel served under one of the most wicked and demonic kings in his time. But he still stayed and served under Nebuchadnezzar. Praise the Lord. So sometimes, some of the faces, sometimes you may say, oh, my boss, you know, for some you say, oh, my, the person I'm learning from, or my boss, or my this, is too wicked, I can't stay. Yeah, there's a limit. There may be, need to be at a, some point where you need to exit and all that. But while you are there, serve with some excitement. Do that with some joy. Learn all you need to do with diligence. Praise the Lord. You know, when we get to service, I am, something I've come to discover is that no matter how much people hate you, 
when you produce value, they cannot avoid you. If people, no matter how they hate you, so long as you carry value, they can't avoid you. So what happens? It means that irrespective, you know, when, when hatred is there, when the people that hate you, when they are able to get at you, it's because you are not able to produce value enough to surmount the hatred. You are in a place of work and all of that. It looks like everybody is against you. You know, all their plans are coming against you. They are frustrating and all of that. And they are able to plot enough to channel the cause that you are able to be sad. It means that you are not exuding. Because what happens? If people that are against you, for instance, if they are doing five hours at work, then you should be ready to do ten hours. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> because the truth is that Results speaks louder than no matter what they come. Results always overshadows whatever the complaint is. Praise the Lord. If you feel that in whatever scenarios you, you, are, you have you know, and all of that, it looks like a toxic environment, push yourself hard enough to create value in that place. Value would always outweigh whatever error they see in you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And this leads us also to service. Serve humbly. When I mean service, service is creating value. Serve humbly. Praise Jesus. Grow your gift beyond the raw talent. Spend time in being the best. Invest all you can to ensure your seed produce the best output. Learn, research, rehearse, volunteer, practice, fail, fail, learn. Praise the Lord. You know, one thing I've come to also understand is that it's a gift to learn how to fail. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because some of you know, <laughs> you need to learn how to fail. So that when you get to the height and experience some failure, so that you don't die when you fail. Praise the Lord. Because there is an attitude and habit that comes with when you learn how to beyond, Praise the Lord. At different points in times, you would always experience some down times and some up times. Praise the Lord. And so, even for parents, when we see, you know, um, when our children experience maybe some negative result and all of that, it's not every time you have to scream in school, scream and scold and all of those kind of things. Let them, oh, because for everybody who fails, the failure already is enough disappointment and anger, true or false. You don't need to now rub it on his face. You teach the person. It's part of now that you have failed. What do you do? You learn again. Look at where are your mistakes. You learn from it. And what is the next steps? Praise God. Praise the Lord. And that's why when you, in, in life, in all of those phases, you see that people who have come to understand the principle of growing up, not jumping up, principle of growing up, praise the Lord, at every point in time, if whatever happens and they fall again or they fail, they rise faster. True or false? Praise the Lord. Fail. Learn. Practice. Grow. Put pressure on yourself. Pressure is good for life. Say pressure is good for life. Tell your neighbor, say pressure is good for life. You need to put some pressure on yourself. Some of us are too relaxed. You need to put some pressure on yourself. Say, put some pressure on myself. Say, I'm going to put some pressure on myself. Yeah, some of those words sound difficult. Come on, why should I put pressure? Pressure is good. You need to look for what next to do. You need to put some... Look at, if you are not... <laughs> You need to, I know, you need, at this stage, especially for many of us, we need, you need to be permanently under pressure. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You need, see, if you are not under pressure, you should be bothered. Be under pressure. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If your work is not putting you under pressure, put yourself under pressure. Take a loan to start anywhere. Put yourself under pressure. <laughs> Push yourself hard. Praise the Lord. Do something big. If you are not under pressure, you are not doing something big. Praise the Lord. If you are not under pressure, you are not doing something big. Are we listening? You need to find to do something bigger than you. 
push yourself hard enough to stretch and break that barrier, break that limit, break the comfort. Praise the Lord. After you break down, you can stay some time oh, to recover. But don't stay there so long. Look for the next pressure. Praise the Lord. As young people, at this stage, we need to be under pressure at all times. Pressure to grow. Pressure to move on to the next level. Don't feel comfortable. Don't feel, don't, don't get excited with where you are now. There is more to you than you are seeing. There is more to you than you even know. The problem is that you have not put yourself hard enough to work. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Can you make a commitment to yourself? I will put myself under pressure. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Be deliberate about putting yourself under pressure to grow. Take that course. You see, we keep learning from our pastor all the time. Pastor just put himself under the pressure of going to our business school just to go. <laughs> Praise Jesus. And you see that at every point, guess this, at every point in time when you experience those things, you suddenly just get bigger. There's something, that's the capacity, you know, maximizing your potential. You know, there's this excitement. How many of us have ever been excited? You know, there's something that you wanted to do. It looks so big and you couldn't just, but you just push yourself under that pressure and you got it done and you just felt bigger in you. Have you experienced that before? Praise the Lord. And guess what? You can't go back to where you are coming from. Once you put yourself, you went through the prayer, not that someone just came and put you out. No, you can't go back to where you are coming from. Because you have learned the rope, you have put yourself in it. Do that your personal concert. Push yourself. Praise the Lord. That show, whatever it is, Put yourself under that pressure. It's good for you now. If you don't do it now, there is no better time to get it done. Because the older you get, the lesser your risk appetite. The older you get, the lesser your risk appetite. At this point, oh, maybe, oh, I only have just one child. When two, three comes, there's some risk you can't take anymore. Oh, before now, I've not got, oh, I'm just married, no child. You know, what else can I do? It just means, worst case, we'll stay one week, no food, so we can do something. Let's push ourselves. But when it, one child comes, you can't do that anymore. Oh, at this point, I'm single. It's just me. I can stay one month without taking energy. I can't even put yourself under that pressure. Praise the Lord. Because if you don't take that step out now, the older you get, the more difficult it gets. Like Pastor George will always say, do things when your mates are doing it. The older you get... The more difficult, no, the older you get, the, the lesser your risk appetite. This is the time where you can just jump, you know, just go out and jump. And there is nothing, you know, just stay aloof and in the air. Praise Jesus. Dream big. You know, something interesting about dreaming big is that the same energy you put in achieving something small is the same energy you need to put in achieving something big. Praise the Lord. But guess what? In achieving something small, you need a lot of concentrated energy. You know, you have to. But if it's big enough, you can just stay from any and just throw yourself. You still get there. You still achieve it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Push yourself hard enough. Diligence, commitment, service. If any man desires to be first, the same shall be last of all and servant of all. Look for opportunities to serve. The way up is down. Let's put ourselves to looking for opportunities to serve. In service, you get better. Even in your, you know, even in your business, let your goal, your focus be serving. Let your goal, your focus be creating value. Because at every point when you create value, when you offer value, you know, people cannot resist value. Praise the Lord. I see value. Uh, you know, whatever I want to put, you can, uh, you can extrapolate the word service for value. You can extrapolate it for love. In the business place, in the workplace, in the career, in the world as it were, the world cannot ignore a man that carries value. Praise Jesus. You know, it's true that you may not like his attitude. You may not even like how he offers it, how he does it. But so long as your life depends on that value he carries or your next, you know, you would always... Come after value. Praise the Lord. 
Ensure you're valuable. That place where you are, your place of work, your environment, create value there. Praise Jesus. As you do this, you see that you are maximizing your opportunities. You are getting better. Praise Jesus. And as you maximize your potential, your worth increases. Praise God. Your worth increases both socially and economically. And you are able to enforce yourself as an authority. Praise God. Praise God. The next is your relational network, your relationship. Relationship and network. Even as you grow, as you go up there, increasing your capacity is increasing the quality of your knowledge and relationship. Increasing your capacity involves increasing the quality of your knowledge. Your knowledge and your relationship. For every next level a man wants to go to, two things are key, your knowledge and your relationship. Praise the Lord. Who do you know? You know, and um, I was listening to a speaker one day, and he said there was a particular businessman, a multi-billionaire, a very big businessman. But one way or the other, this man has been to himself, probably offers value, is diligent about his work, is very hardworking. Praise the Lord. He, has, he exuded some of the principles we have mentioned earlier. So he was a big man in the right, had a lot of employ, employers and all of those kind of things. But guess what? Something happened to him one day. He was in a big business mess and all those kind of things. A business mess that just a call from somewhere could have saved him. But you know what? He didn't have anybody in government. He didn't know anybody in power or that he could just place a call to. And so he got a consultant to come and help him to clear the mess. And they looked, you mean you don't know anybody? Who can you call that can call someone? And they look for, look for, look for nobody. And guess what they had to do? They had to go and hire a lawyer that knows government to come and help you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So even in our doings, in our growing, you know, we need to learn to build appropriate networks, build appropriate relationships in maximizing your potential, your relationship, your network, as you, build your, as you build your knowledge, as you build your influence, build your social capital as well. Praise the Lord. If among your peers, you are, you know, ev amongst everyone, it looks like you are the best among everyone you roll with, there is a problem. Look at the life of Joseph. While Joseph was going through, you know, in the, from being diligent, even in the house of his master, and based on that, he was sent to prison. When he had the opportunity, you know, he could have just kept to himself and just be not so happy. But even while he was in prison, he was still made a leader there. He was creating value everywhere he find himself. And based on that, when some guys who came from government, he knew, you know, sometimes... Um, Something happened one day, a friend, someone I know for one reason or the other was um, taken to prison. And it was one of those stupid excuses that our government would just use and just tie you down. You know those kind of things, sanitation, waste, you know all those kind of stuff. And while he was there, even some of the prisoners there say, we know that you are not like us. We, we have a long time to stay here. So we will treat you well. So when you get out, you remember us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So he was there, and some government officials also were in the prison with him. And they had, you know, a particular scenario. They came to meet him. And as a smart guy that he was, he had to build appropriate relationship and rapport with them. Do you know that if he had not positioned himself as someone of value, they would have actually gone out and even forgotten him. Praise the Lord. But he created, can you see, when his next level was to come, when God was to bless him, it has to be with existing relationships. Praise the Lord. So do we build bridges or do we burn bridges? How are we building our relationship with your current classmates, with your colleagues, with the people around you, with people in church? Are you one that when I think of someone in this life, when I think of someone with integrity, when I think of someone to go into partnership, you know, when we give, you know, in church, when we come and we give ourselves roles and all that, are you the one that always give excuses why things are not being done? Amongst us, we know the people that, ah, if I commit this thing, I can go and sleep. We know the one that we need to follow up every two, two hours. We know. Praise God. And so, even if you are one of the best in your craft, 
But for the purpose of integrity, for the purpose of sticking to your word, one thing you need to know, everybody, even you, even if you're a very, very not so serious person, you hold your recommendations dearly, true or false. So for you to give your recommendation on someone, then the person must be worth it. Praise the Lord. So when we go about, you may think that, oh, we're just in church. Church people, they are just like that and all that. But guess what? In the front of every of us, we are writing our CVs. We are preparing our CVs. Where recommendations are needed. Where we need, you know, those opportunities will always play themselves. And so in my mind, when they say, when an unserious person, maybe a client that doesn't know how to pay well, ask, I say, ah, okay, this person does not do a good job. Or his job, so let me recommend this one. Both of them fit themselves. You will plot the map. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but when you know that, oh, this person is a very, very thorough person, and he knows how to pay well, you will go and look for someone who is thorough and values that relationship. Praise the Lord. So in your acts and in your deeds, because you are building your potential, you are building your network. You are building your relationship. You are building the oral around you. You don't care what oral is around you. When I think of someone I want to give a cheap job to, does your name just smell in my nose? <laughs> Praise the Lord. And when I'm looking for someone who is serious in his dealing, not slothful in business, but diligent, why does he easily click to call you? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And one thing we need to also realize is that you don't know where everybody here is sitting. Some people might not be kings, but they sit at the table of kings where they can sound your name there. Praise the Lord. I've, ex you know, I've experienced such, in the, oh, someone just told me about you. Oh, you know, you're doing a good work or I'm hearing about you. The, someone just said something about me somewhere. He doesn't need me yet, but someone has sounded something about good to me in his ears. So when the time arrives, he will remember me. Praise the Lord. So when you interact with people, when you communicate with people, when you engage in meetings, in group, whether it is voluntarily, whether it is paid, in fact, we have discovered that people who learn to volunteer would always outperform people who don't, know, who don't volunteer. Praise the Lord. If I can offer my services free, you know, when I'm not being paid, I can be passionate and be excited and be committed about it. How much more when I'm being paid for it? And something I've come to discover is that no matter how much pastor prays or say, I declare in the name of Jesus, receive the spirit of diligence, receive the spirit it, 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 it is not the spirit called by practice. You practice diligence. Praise God. So, and that's why we encourage people, oh, I don't have a job now. Attach yourself to someone. Why are you doing that? You need to learn the culture of work. How to wake up. You know, some people don't know how to wake up in the morning and just dress and go to work. So, when they even get job, they will be slothful because they don't know how to practice. They've not practiced it. Praise the Lord. You have been used to them waking you up. When you were in primary school, your mom had to wake you up. Secondary school, they had to wake you up. Even in university, probably you are going from home. They need to wake you up and shout. Or your roommate had to wake you up and force you to school. Now, when nobody has to wake you up, praise the Lord, you need to practice how to wake up. <laughs> Get ready. Oh, people, how to learn how to wake up by six or seven when people that are serious in life are going to work when they wake up. <laughs> praise God. And go to work. Learn how to sit down for, or be in a place for six, eight hours and not get bored and just be busy being productive. You know, some people don't know how to, be, how to be focused for eight straight hours in a day, working or doing something. After one hour, they just get fucked out. And that's because even in class, too, in class, after one, two hours, lecture is boring, they just sleep off in class. <laughs> Praise the Lord. These habits and this attitude, you need to learn it. Praise God. Some people don't know how to stay amongst people, interact with people for a long time. Suddenly, the people will start irritating them. That's why you attach yourself so that when you get the right kind of job, you don't by yourself do yourself by sucking yourself because you have not learned the right habit, workplace habit. They don't, you don't talk to your boss and say, yeah. You don't go to interview and say, yo. 
Do you understand what I'm trying to say? <laughs> this the, the problem is that your language that you have been dealing so much informally, informally. Yeah, yo, and mind you, your vision is the vision of a corporate environment. Meanwhile, you have been interacting in an informal environment. Go to a formal environment, see how things work. Beg someone, bro, please let me be your PA. Just to be in a formal environment, don't pay me. Let me change my tongue from, yeah, you know, KK. You are typing a letter or you are, you know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> this, these things, you can, no matter how much you fast and pray, if you've not been in an environment where these things are being practiced, you can't know it. And so that's why um, you see that every point that went, oh, they are trying to see, how can you even interpret, you know, something, how can you interpret your learnings? Oh, you've worked in social place for, have you worked in the place for 20 years with one year experience? Or you've worked in the place for 20 years with 20, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Practice these things. Praise Jesus. Your relationship. In every profession, career, business, there is always a career sponsor. I've discovered in life, at every point in time, that's why when you're getting into any industry, any career, any field, business, whatever it is you're doing, you must always find how to place yourself to be valuable to people that can drive your progress. Praise the Lord. Your names need to be sounded in boardrooms. Your names need to be sounded in places that matter. You may not be able to be there, but your name can be ringing there. It's the relationship you build, how you manage relationships. Some of us, how do you even treat the relationship? For the first time, your boss invites you to his house, or brings you over to his place, and all of those kind of things, and being as it is, just because he just allows you, or because uh, we are pastor, allows us to be close to him, you can call him every time, you will not be calling by 1 a.m. or, you know, after 10 p.m. Even if you want to do that, you will, if he has not given you that appointment, you know, these things are practice. You say, sir, please, I have an emergency. Can I call you now? You send text message first. Even if truly, if he sees that and is available, he'll call you. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes you just say, I don't know, I can't, my, I can't work in this place. I can't even talk to my boss. I can't. It's not that there are other people who are talking to you. You've not learned how to manage those kind of relationships. You know, you learn to manage relationships below you, how to manage those working below, manage relationships at your level, and managing relationships above you. Praise the Lord. Because we are all church members, we are all here and all of that. And so, oh, I know Pastor George probably is the CEO of his company. And all his employees and all of that in his workplace, they see our God. And I just, I just I want to come and meet George. No, you don't just walk in there that way. As long as I'm stepping into the environment to do a job within his space, I must give him that respect within that space. When we come back, uh, George Alpha, praise the Lord. Learning to manage relationships. So when those, I'm saying this, when those relationships and those networks come, you need to learn to manage them to sustain them. So you don't just blow them off. That's why you see there are some people say, ah, this guy used to be close to me or these people used to be close to me, but suddenly they have stopped. No when to ask and no when to ask. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So that even the potential you have gathered, you don't cut it short again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are we together, church? In every, Okay. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and men. Praise the Lord. And finally, dare to dream. Believe in your dream and pursue your dreams. I remember some years ago, um, we, a pastor did an exercise with us in church. And he said, everybody, close your eyes. Just dream. Just dream. I want us to, you can just dream. Whatever it is you want, just dream, you know, the next 5, 10 years, 20 years of your life, what, what's the picture you can see in your heart? 
And after we had finished all of that, I said, those dreams are too small. Can you dream bigger? So but the problem is that the things you are seeing now, you cannot even expand your mind beyond that. But actually, yes, the problem why you can't expand is that you are even doubting, this one I've dreamt, can I even achieve it? Praise God. But guess what? Dreaming is free. I can dream to be all I want to be in this world. It's not costing me anything. And nobody will hold me for it. So why not just dare to dream bigger? It doesn't cost anything. Whether you, you can't fail at dreaming big. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, you can't, can you fail at dreaming big? Oh, I want to sit down with the current king of England. I can't fail at I want to dream of it. I can't fail at I can imagine it. And I'll be there now. Praise the Lord. If there's any barrier, I can pick up a gun in my mind, shoot anybody on you, and I get there. Praise, it's my mind, and I will achieve it. True or false? Would anything stop me from seeing him tonight in my mind? I can't dream. Praise God. So why am I scared? Would I pay for, would I pay for seeing myself doing that? Would it cost me anything? So why are you scared of it? Praise the Lord. Dare to dream bigger. Your dreams are small. Don't worry. You will soon achieve them. So, because you will soon achieve them, dare to stretch your mind and dream bigger. Praise the Lord. Put your faith to work. When we say dream bigger, put your faith to work. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. The most powerful creative tool you have is your mind. Use it. Dream enough. After dreaming, go and act in the direction of your dream. Sooner you know it, you will supersede your dreams. Praise the Lord. Let's put our faith to work. Sooner that you know it, you see yourself living beyond your dreams. Living beyond the life that you see. Let's put our faith to work. And when you put your faith to work, you will see God's word working in your life. Praise the Lord. Can you jam your hands together and celebrate Jesus? Can you jam your hands together and celebrate Jesus? the prayer you chant before taking the meal is the way we live. The Lord came to show me how crooked I am, but grace came to straighten me out. Hello, I'm Ostasa Barry Siagon, the senior pastor of House of Grace Benin, and I'm of Church of God Mission. Here, we liberate people from the bondage of religion through the gospel of grace that we teach, encouraging them to be all that God has called them to be. House of Grace is a dynamic worship center where lives are transformed in an atmosphere of love, friendship, and humility. We have seen troubled marriages restored. We have seen miracle babies to couples who are waiting on the Lord for children, birth of new businesses, and an undying passion to reach out to the unsaved for Jesus Christ. Come fellowship with us today and let Jesus make a difference in your life. Welcome to E3, 